Good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to still present despite having been grounded by COVID. I was asked to cover the last 50 years of bat conservation in America, then and now. And as you'll see, there have been some dramatic changes, both for good and bad. I distinctly recall how our founding members, people like Terry Vaughn, Clyde Jones, Lenny Cockrum, uh, were urgently concerned about bat conservation. Why are we so concerned then about bat conservation? Because <clears throat> America was in the midst of a, an incredible avalanche of uh, media propaganda warning people that most bats were rabid and they were dangerous, would attack you, bite you, let you anoint it. And uh, these stories were appearing in Good Housekeeping, Family Circle, newspaper headlines, coast to coast, all claiming bats were exceedingly dangerous. <laughs> Fortunately, back then we had some very competent people who stepped forward and defended bats. Danny Constantine, Brock Fenton, Robert Barclay, Tom Coons, each conducted research that ended up showing that scaring people about bat disease was causing far more serious public health problems than could have been created by the bats themselves. These people laid the groundwork for me to write a popular publication for the public in which I carefully outlined the difference between fraudulent and honest reporting of bad disease. Fortunately, as people learned the difference, they began suing companies for doing bad things that shouldn't have been done, and that pretty much ended poisoning bats in America. But we still had a major problem centered right here in Austin. Public health officials had warned that the bats moving into the Congress Avenue Bridge were not only mostly rabid, but dangerous and vicious would attack. People were signing petitions to have the bats eradicated. Headline stories were running coast to coast, some of them actually saying that hundreds of thousands of rabid bats were invading and attacking the citizens of Austin. <clears throat> It didn't take a lot of time for me using live bats in the hand to demonstrate convincingly to people that uh, the bats weren't dangerous. And today, as most of you are aware, these bats are world famous. They bring in millions of tourist dollars every summer and they consume tons of insect pests every night. And as we started to make real progress toward enlightening the public about the reality of bats, many new opportunities began to open. For example, mining companies, which had never previously cooperated with us, uh, previously they had just closed old abandoned mines with, as you see here, uh, with little regard to whether bats were in the mines or not. But once they started appreciating the bats weren't dangerous in their values. They actually cooperated with us to preserve more than a thousand mines in America, uh, saving millions of bats from being buried alive. We also formed partnerships with cavers and these entities built hundreds of gates to protect key bat resources in caves. And in fact, they were so successful. Here's an excellent example. Barbara and Davis in 1969 speculated that this species based on its precipitous decline would soon become extinct. Yet as a result of partnership projects with cavers today, we have literally millions more than when their extinct was extinction was predicted. As we gain more favorable images of bats. Projects like Gary McCracken and John Westbrook's now classic study of bat assistance to agriculture 
uh, became possible for the first time. When we first tried to raise money for this kind of thing, it was impossible. But as attitudes improved, progress improved. And just south of our border, Rodrigo Medellin made huge progress, simply showing people bats in the hand, letting them understand that they weren't fierce and dangerous creatures going out on the attack, and uh, also, of course, letting them know about the values of that. Just as we started making all this progress, we heard about wind power, and we don't need to go into that today, but easily there are millions of bats being killed annually in the United States today because of failure to, not failure on our part to look for solutions, but failure on the industry's part to implement the solutions that have been found. And if that wasn't bad enough, along came white nose syndrome and killed millions more. I'm delighted to see that there's been excellent research, both lab and field research, documenting the more precise needs of hibernating bats. And I'm very pleased with Greg Turner and his crew from Pennsylvania. Some of their reports were presented here at this meeting, how they have altered the entrances of mines and restored prior conditions in important bat caves. And as a result of lowering the temperature back to what the bats ideally need, they have recovering populations of bats. Now, just as we're seeing light at the proverbial end of the tunnel, we are faced with yet another avalanche of media cam claims. Things like this, Time Magazine, bats are the number one carriers of disease. National Public Radio, bats are arguably among the most dangerous animals in the world. Wall Street Journal, where will the next pandemic come from? Likely from bats. <clears throat> now one would think that before a traditionally prestigious entity would make comments like this, they would check to be sure that they were founded on good science. I'll let you judge for yourselves what's good science, but it all started with a report in 2017 that bats have more viruses than other mammals. Unfortunately, this comparison just compared four out of six orders of mammals, and worse yet, they examined almost as many bats as all other mammals combined. And as Rodrigo Medellin early pointed out, this can contribute a horrible bias. We can find a new virus anywhere we look, including on our own bodies. So by just looking predominantly at bats, of course, we'll find them predominantly in bats. Fortunately, Lenz and Stryker came along and looked at all orders and reported that bats harbor no more viruses than other mammals. But I am shocked at the number of those who apparently wish to scare people about bats who have not acknowledged this paper and continue to tell people that bats are exceptionally dangerous because they harbor more diseases. Now, looking back over decades of time, trying to help people overcome their fear of bats, what do you suppose pictures like this do for public? appreciation of bats as safe neighbors. I don't think I have to comment much on this. It doesn't do much for confidence that bats aren't going to attack or be dangerous. Teresa took this film me at exactly that same place within a few months of the time the virologists were there. I've spent more than 60 years on every continent where bats exist, studying and photographing more than 400 species. I've been surrounded many times. I've never contracted anything that could be construed as an emerging disease from a bat. 
I am protected, like all bat researchers, from rabies. Simple. But this raises some questions that I'd like for us all to consider. Do bats make safe neighbors? How come there haven't been outbreaks among bat researchers? Why no outbreaks among huge bat colonies and cities? Why no outbreaks from millions of people who eat bats? Why none from guano miners? If bats are so dangerous, how are all these people interacting closely with bats, including traditionally us researchers, without a problem? <clears throat> I think we've pretty much answered the dangerous bat hypothesis right here in Austin. We have millions of people who come here to enjoy our bats close up. It's been going on for decades. Not one person has been attacked. Not one person has been in any way harmed. No one has contracted a disease. We have now become the world's center for educating people to overcome their fear of bats. And I'm very proud of our accomplishment. I would like to help any of the rest of you. I know that everybody here wants to protect bats. If you want help and you need you don't feel like you know enough about the literature. Uh, all of our resources on Merlin Tuttle's Bat Conservation uh, website are backed up by the scientific literature. And we'd be delighted to help you in any way with either resource information or photos in defense of bats. Thank you. <laughs>